the president emeritus and historian at the Gettysburg Foundation with Caitlin Ball, the park archaeologist standing on the diamond, we call it the Lincoln Square today, here at Gettysburg at the David Wills home. This is the home that President Lincoln stayed in when he came to Gettysburg and he gave the Gettysburg Address. It's now owned by the National Park Service. It underwent extensive renovations around 2009. It's open to the public at certain times, but we're going to do an episode of behind the scenes at Gettysburg, inside the Gettysburg National Military Park. This is our second one. If you haven't seen the first one at the James Warfield House along Seminary Ridge for Black History Month for February, go back and look at that on YouTube. This is going to be our presentation uh, number two inside the David Wills house and Caitlin has brought out for us. Caitlin, what do you bring out for us? Um, I brought some artifacts that were found when the David Wills house was being renovated by the Park Service in 2008 and I'm excited to show you. All right, we're going to see some of this for the first time. She's brought artifacts found inside the David Wills house when it underwent renovation and guess what? We're up on the square where all the trucks and cars are. It's the most traffic we've had here since the Civil War, everybody. And we're out here today, so join us inside. Thanks. All right, we're inside the David Wills house on Lincoln Square at Gettysburg, and in the Civil War, they called it the Diamond. And Caitlin and I have moved inside on the second floor of the Wills house, where the Wills house, uh, where the Wills, David Wills' family would have had bedrooms at the time of the American Civil War. And Lincoln stayed in the room just across from where we are standing. Now, we've got some great artifacts to show you, thanks to Caitlin, thanks to our National Park. Park Service partners for this behind the scenes at Gettysburg video that we're going to do for this month. And it's items found inside the Wills House when the Wills House was rehabilitated. Caitlin, so first of all, why don't you tell us a little bit about, before we get into the artifacts, what the archaeologist does here. What a great job you've got, man. We all want, yeah. Caitlin, we all want Caitlin's job, everybody, because you're pulling out cool things. But tell us a little bit about uh, what you do, how long you've been here. If yeah, you um, I've been here um, almost four years now, and as an archaeologist here at the park, um, I'm involved with any projects that have ground disturbance on the park. So when they're doing construction, when they're doing um, any time they put up a new sign, um, any time they're rehabilitating some of the historic structures on the park, if there's ground disturbance involved, I am also there to see what we find in the ground and I document and um, photograph and take notes of any objects that we might find in the projects. And also another part of my job is report writing and cataloging yeah. and um, documenting the artifacts that we do find, um, which come to this project right, is, right, right, um, right. and that portion of the project is when we're researching and documenting these artifacts um, to go into collections and museums. And Caitlin, let's make sure the viewers understand this. So when you're out there doing these things as the park archaeologist, just like the rehabilitation on Little Round Top, mm -hmm. this stuff found has got to be kept. And not only does it have to be kept, it's got to be preserved. Right. And it's got to be cataloged. And it's got to be processed. So for you non-museum folks or non-archaeological folks, mm -hmm. there's a whole process behind we found something and now we've got to take care of it. We've got to house it. We've got to research it. There's a yes. lot of things we got to do. And everybody, that takes a tremendous amount of time. The park collection's huge. So when we talk over a million items down mm -hmm. in the park collection at the Museum and Visitor Center, we're not talking about just Civil War related items. Mm -hmm. We're also talking about items that are found at these places. Right. Which includes the David Wills House when the park underwent the renovations here, which I think we were just discussing. Mm -hmm. Kale, which we think is around 2009. Mm -hmm. So for many years, this building had a bunch of different lives. Now it's been rehabilitated. It's open to the uh, public, and you should check the park's website to get uh, more hours and times related to that. But 
what do we have here? And we should say, you've not had this out on public display, correct? No, so this is the first time that um, I'm showing this publicly. Um, I actually just brought this stuff out of storage um, from regional collections last year. Um, and now we're going through the process of researching all of the objects and getting a better idea of um, what we found during the rehabilitation of this house. Yeah. And all of the artifacts that I'm talking about today were actually found inside of a wall, which is why they're all so well preserved, which usually doesn't happen in archeology. span yeah. um, But these were inside of a wall, these artifacts, um, and over time, it's almost like a time capsule when things were thrown in the wall over time, um, just a buildup of all these really incredible artifacts that tell the story. And, Caitlin, why do you, why were these things put in a wall? What, I mean, what is your, <laughs> I mean, do we you know? know? Is it just that they did some renovations and this stuff got stuffed in there and nobody knew it was there? Yeah, or I think, what, how, why, I think, how did it get there? Um, <laughs> there's, there's a few different theories right now, which we're still trying to figure out yeah. by looking at this stuff. But um, if you think about it, we're right in the center of town. And yeah. at that time, um, if you had garbage that or things that you no longer wanted, but it wasn't necessarily garbage that was food or something that would smell. We're right in the center of town. Right. You know, you'd have to go away to throw away stuff like that. Um, if you had stuff that was just discarded or no longer used, um, you know, maybe yeah. toss it away somewhere where you won't be able to see it or people coming over. Um, and a lot of the the a lot of the glass and ceramic artifacts that we found in there, maybe a plate broke and um, they threw uh -huh. it in the wall over time, which um, sometimes is seen in archaeological sites as a deterrent for mice, you know, in the oh. walls. Oh. And so they would throw broken glass and ceramics. Thought about that. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, we thank you for throwing stuff out. You I folks know. <laughs> that lived in this house yes. or the stores that were in this house, thank you for throwing this stuff out mm -hmm. and being a time <laughs> capsule for the Gettysburg Foundation and for the Gettysburg <laughs> National Military Park. We're grateful for that. That That is just fascinating. So the life of this house and I mentioned it uh, outside, but this house was uh, built, we believe, in about 1816. Alexander Cobain, a very well-known merchant, built it. So, Keelan, this, these shoes, uh, how old are these? Yeah, these shoes actually fit that time period you were just talking about. They were handmade sometime between, we think, 1810 and 1820. These are leather shoes, um, all hand-stitched. Um, leather and you can see the very tiny delicate stitching yeah. of the leather um, on the seams and even the bottom where they stuck the nails and the heel um, and the leather lacing. Now that's not a very big foot obviously from, no. from, from looking at it. Right. And I mean I don't know of course shoes back in those days they didn't have left or right uh, areas and you can't really tell whether what whether these were men's shoes or women's <laughs> shoes I guess. Yeah, but, yeah, and they could yeah. have been children's as well or so these were found inside the wall downstairs? They were, yes, so they were found um, in the wall yeah. under the staircase. So it makes you wonder whether it belonged to um, the uh, one of the stores that, that one of the early stores that were inside here. Mm -hmm. At one time Alexander Cobain had a store uh, in this building, in the very early history of the building, believe it or not, that Alexander Dobbin, um, the Dobbins, uh, were were involved in, I believe. So, uh, wow, that's that's uh, that's fascinating. And these were just how were they? Do you remember? Were, were, uh, is there any record as to how they were inside the wall? So everything was just kind of thrown in, and over okay. time, brick and mortar and um, debris from the wall okay. had fallen in. So yeah. it was all. Um, basically removed um, in in buckets and layers of just lifting up and you know brushing away the debris. Um, so it was all just kind of thrown in there, probably wherever there were um, areas in the stairs that yeah. you would be able to throw things down yeah. from the wall. So this, this would predate uh, Wills's family. Mm -hmm. Now I know there's some items that you have here today that would have been here at the time the Wills's would have been here in the, in the home. And they were here a lot of years, some 35 years mm -hmm. they, were, they were in the home. But this, this predate, this is to the early history of the Wills house. Wow, yes. that's fascinating. Yeah. All right, well you got another, you got something else mm -hmm. you wanna yep. pull out and show us? No, so these, um, these little glass toys, this is a, a glass marble um, that you can see once had red paint on it, actually. Wow. And over time, you can see the patina on the 
the green glass, but it was also painted red at one time. <laughs> um, and then this is a tiny little iron that was probably um, from a dollhouse, you know, a doll yeah. set. Uh, but it was hand blown glass, like somebody made this little iron. <laughs> wow. As a, a children's toy, yes. this would have been as a yes. children's toy. Yeah. And by the way, everybody, that's what an iron actually looked like at the time <laughs> of the Civil War or before the Civil War. And then we have some some scissors. Pearson. And uh, this is super cool because usually in archaeology, when I'm uh, digging things, excavating in the ground, iron and metal objects are often so deteriorated that you can barely tell what they are anymore yeah. so to find objects that have been preserved so well and not been in soil and water and so um, let's make it clear to everybody this could have been the wall in the wall of the wills house for 200 years yes, i mean yes. basically what we're talking about <laughs> yeah wow and then this um is actually a um paper or paste box that once held uh, percussion caps um, for French ammunition, small arms. Okay. Um, and for like it's, a, it's a pistol in, or a rifle or something? Okay. Yeah, and it's all in French. Oh, <laughs> so wow. okay. I'm still working on um, <laughs> figuring more out about this. Yeah. But you, as you can see um, here, there's a label that yeah. was originally on it, and it's handwritten, tiny little letters that says Gettysburg wow. on there. And then on this side, you have a wax seal. Wow. Yeah, so although we don't have the percussion caps inside. Yeah. So um, this, once again, could have been from the commercial, could have been from the store down here, sent to Gettysburg. Yes, to yes, and imported um, yeah, goods. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Yes, and then these. I think um, these dice in dominoes were probably related to the time it was a hotel in a tavern. Mm -hmm. um, you know, found with, we had a, a couple hundred glass tumbles, tumblers um glasses that were probably Found. used okay. yeah um in the kitchen and so when they broke they would discard yeah. them um, but these are super cool because they're constructed with both ivory and wood and then there's a little nail a little pin that's holding the two halves together yeah. um, and then you see the the paint is covering the dots on these and some of these were actually burnt so i have a couple um dominoes we have probably around 40 of these actually that we found. Um, but some of them were actually burnt, so you can see the wood part was burnt away and then the ivory part is still intact. Mm -hmm. And then- And is that because they were by the fireplace? I mean, you Yeah, were quite at? possibly. Yeah. Um, yeah, as you can see this one, you can see part of that was yeah. actually burnt away. Um, and then these little- teeny, I've never seen a set of dye that small. Teeny, I mean, teeny, teeny, tiny dice. Yeah. Um, also made out of ivory and painted. I can't even imagine making those. I know, they're so uh, tiny. Yeah. <laughs> and this is actually really cool. Um, there were a bunch of these. There are some little square case bottles um, mm -hmm. and they, they say London on the side, but that's all they say. There's no maker's mark um, uh, and they were hand blown. Um, wow. You can see this, yeah. the little pontal scar on the bottom, um, but these glass case jars, they would be square. So um, when they were importing goods, yeah. um, you know, you could fit a whole bunch of them in a case and they could sit nicely next to each other and have a less mm -hmm. chance of breaking. Um, but this was hard because a lot of glass bottles have the word London on them. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so after doing some research, um, this is actually London um, was a type of dry mustard that was popular at the oh, time of the Civil War. So it's not so, the city of London, it's a no. London dry mustard yes. in the Civil War era is yeah, what this so, is. Right, wow. so they called it London mustard and it was like dried mustard and um, that was probably used in the kitchen. As a condiment. Right, so a condiment. Um, okay. and they had a whole bunch of these bottles too, so I'm sure it was used for okay. cooking during the time that it was a hotel and when they served nice. uh, lots of food. but. There was a bunch of these, so that was that was pretty cool to find so many of the same exact bottle. Um, 
Some of the viewers may not know that Gettysburg gets rail service here in 1859, uh, uh, 1858, very end of 1858, and the railroad station is built in 1859. But even before that, we've got major roads here, so things were ordered from the stores. The merchants here in Gettysburg had items that came uh, by ports in Baltimore, for example. So you could have the latest fashions here. I think people think at Gettysburg they don't have uh, what the latest things are. So this this kind of stuff shows this stuff is getting imported in, yes. and whether it's before the railroad, coming up in a wagon from a railroad depot, one of the nearest places. But Gettysburg gets a rail service mm -hmm. uh, in 18, late 1858 and then into 1859. So at the time of the Civil War, these goods are coming up right from off the ships or wherever they need to come from. Right, yeah, yeah especially, um, you know, the, the French yeah. percussion cap box. Right. And uh, as you'll see with some of the ceramics that were also imported from Europe as well. Wow, Caitlin, what, what do we have here? So this is um, a Surrey whip that would have been used for a uh, Surrey, a carriage. Um, and it's actually wood on the inside. There's a wooden dowel that's holding this part. Um, and then it's wrapped with teeny, teeny, tiny um, pieces of leather. And then Jeez. as you can see, the top it uh, begins to be braided, the leather. Really. We have any idea what year this would have been? Probably uh, either the Civil War or right before the Civil War. Wow. Yeah. Okay. All right. Makes you wonder whether David Wills, this is a, <laughs> a Surrey whip again, for the horses that were in the parade on November 19, 1863. We know the president himself rode a horse. I'm sure he didn't have to use a whip, but this is a, for, for the carriages. I mean, Wills was a very prominent citizen here, had money to uh, spend on such things. But wow. And, I, and, and we don't know where this was made or anything like that. But, no, yeah. no. Wow. Was this found, and this was found in a wall too? It was, yep. How would a whip get in a wall? I mean, that, to me, that just, that's fascinating. These are, uh, and these were also found in the wall. They were. And do we have a date on some of these patterns? Do we know? Yeah, um, so still, I would say the earliest is probably 1820s, 1830s. Wow. Um, and some of these were produced up until the 1850s. Okay. Um, and okay. So these, these were actually all broken, and I mended them back together. Um, so probably they why pieces. they were, you think why they were in the wall? or Because yes. they're broken. Yes. They just, they just were trying to discard them. So this could have been from when Alexander Cobain actually was here. You say from the 1820s. He dies in 1823. And then it was sold, and the Bank of Gettysburg owned it for 35 years, and then Wills comes in in 1859. So this could have been while there was a commercial operation mm -hmm. here. Uh, yeah. yeah. These are, um, these are some transfer print, so it would be printed directly onto the plate, the design. Um, and this one, you can see the maker's mark on the back. It's the Tuscan Rose print. This is and do we know where that would have been come from, or no? Um, Europe and England, yeah. these were produced. Yeah, these oh, wow. transfer print. This is also a transfer print. This one is earlier as well. This one, this one is pretty cool. It's a brown transfer print. Mm -hmm. um, and it's boy it's the a detail scene. and it's tremendous. Yeah, it's a scene of Mount Olympus. A scene of Mount a scene of Mount <laughs> a little Olympus. saucer with the scene wow. of Mount Olympus. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then this one looks a little more plainer. It's interesting to see the is. differences. You got this Mount is. Olympus, and then you have fruit, mm -hmm. right? Or, or this not. one is is probably um, the earliest. It's a sponge print along the edges, and this is actually hand painted. They're lemons. Wow. <laughs> and what year, what, what, what period do we think this is? Or? I would say um, early 1810s, 1820s. Oh, wow, 30s. even yeah. earlier. Yeah. Um, so this, this, this would have been stuff that would probably have been brought into this place mm -hmm. before it was even, so this might have been, Alexander Cobain was born in, if, we, if I didn't already say it, 1767, and he dies in 1823. So th this could have come in when he actually had this place built. He had a house next door. He had a, a, a place next door, I should say. And then this was built to expand that. So this very well could have come with him. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Fascinating stuff. Wow. 
Caitlin, on behalf of the Gettysburg Foundation, we just want to thank you for your time uh, and all the great work you're doing as the park archaeologist here at the Gettysburg National Military Park. We appreciate our partners, what they're doing, the preservation of this stuff and how important it is and what's found here and the discoveries made. This is happening all over the place. This is happening all over the battlefield <laughs> at the property uh, owned uh, by the people of the United States under the care of the National Park Service and also in the buildings uh, that are under the National Park Service's care as well. We can't thank you enough for coming out, being with us. For Will's House information, please check the Gettysburg National Military Park's website for the hours and times uh, that the building here is open. So, Caitlin, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. For this very special behind the scenes in the David Will's House, items found in the walls of the David <laughs> Will's House. Thank you very much. And the first time really out for anybody yeah. to see. This is the first time this stuff has been out. So we thank you for that. We know you all like this video because this is stuff that nobody gets to see. So be sure you go to the Gettysburg Foundation social media channels and be sure to like us, be sure to follow us, be sure to subscribe on YouTube so you can keep up with all this great content. Thanks.